Good morning. For unto us a child is born. Welcome to Beth Eden Baptist Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Craig Martin Jenkins. We're so happy that you came to join with us this morning, and we hope that you get something out of our service today. Whether it's a song, scripture, or preach word, we're glad that you came out to join with us. And again, enjoy the service, but have a very Merry Christmas, and God bless you. Good morning, Church of Beth. Well, I hope you came to praise him today. You look mighty good. I see the joy of Jesus all over you. Look at the person to your left and to your right. Tell them you look mighty good.
And the message that day was, to you in David's town this day is born of David's line, the Savior who is Christ, the Lord. And this shall be the sign.
Good morning. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. The theme for the fourth Sunday is peace. As Christmas draws near, we are reminded of two passages of scripture. The first from Isaiah 9, 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And Luke 2.14 says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The Beth Eden Angel Tree Ministry thanks each of you who participated in Angel Tree 2020, and the Media Ministry thanks each and every one of you for your food donations. Join our Sunday worship service every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. by dialing 312-626-6799, ID 9580-5000-607-POUND. Our prayer line is open Monday through Thursday at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 9 p.m. Fridays at 6 a.m., and 12 noon. And for prayer, dial 712-775-7035. Access code 709315-pound. Please continue to support the obligations of the church through your tithes and offerings. Your contributions can be given through Givelify, Zelle, your financial institution, or simply by depositing your donation in the church mailbox. And remember to follow the guidelines set by the Centers for Disease Control by wearing a mask in public, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, and practice social distancing. Have a safe, merry, and blessed Christmas season. May God bless you and may peace abide with you always. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 2 Samuel chapter 7, reading from verses 1 through 3 and 12 through 13. Now it came to pass, when the king was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go, do all this in your heart, for the Lord is with you. Verse 12. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. The word of God is already blessed. Let us pray. Our Lord, our God and our Father, which art in heaven and all around us all the time, we come to praise you, Lord, we praise you because you are almighty God and you are God all by yourself. We praise you because you do some wonderful things, Lord, in our lives. And we praise you for it, for you are God and God all by yourself. So, Lord, we, we come to say thank you. Thank you for all your blessings, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for watching over us and covering us with your blood. Now, Lord, we ask that you forgive us, for we all are sinners and we all fall short of your glory. But you are wonderful and a merciful God. So at this time, Lord, we, we come to say we ask for your blessings, Lord. Bless us individually and bless us collectively, Lord. Bless those who are grieving for the loss of loved ones, Lord. Bless those who are going through sickness right now, Lord. Bless this country as we have had three, over 300,000 pass away from this COVID. But Lord, you brought forth through you a vaccine, a vaccine that's able to put this virus in its place. 
And it's not something that came from the lab, Lord. It's something that came from you called love. So, Lord, we ask that you bless us and watch over us. Bless our children, Lord. Bless us as we go here and forth, Lord. Bless those who are looking for something from you that they just don't know where to find it. Lord, we ask that you bless us and keep us and watch over us. Help us to do the things that will be pleasing to you. We ask these things and all things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Well, in that stable on the night that the Savior was born, it was a holy night. The night sky was holy. The stars were holy. The stable was holy. The angels were holy. And the little lamb of God was holy.
Good morning, Beth Eaton. Good morning, family and friends and those that are sharing with us this morning. I want to just tell you Merry Christmas and Happy New Year early. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We're grateful that you allowed us to come once again in order to share and to hear what you have to say through your word, God. I don't take this lightly, and I don't look at anything or anyone other than you. So I pray that you have your way. Go before this sermon and go before those that are listening. God, let there be a blessing and let there be something that's said, something that's uttered that will inspire, encourage, and most importantly, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The text for this evening is coming from 2 Samuel 7, 1 through 3, same book, same chapter, verses 12 and 13. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads, when David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all the surrounding enemies, the king summoned Nathan, the prophet. Look, David said, I am living in a beautiful cedar palace, but the ark of God is out there in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, go ahead and do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. For when you die, down, going down to verse 12, and this is Nathan speaking to David, the words of God. For when you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, your own offspring, and, and I will make his kingdom strong. He is the one who will build a house, a temple, for my name. And I will secure his royal throne forever. The house that God built. Mm. This is the fourth expression of Advent, and, and the theme is love. It is the nature of God. It is the very essence of God, love that we are experiencing this morning through this text. The situation here is that the Ark of the Covenant dwells inside of a tent, and King David desires to build a temple to house it. There's something about home, something about a house, something about where we and where you and I live that is integrated in God's plan and design. Yes, sir. For over 400 years, God dwells with Israel in a tabernacle behind a tent wherever the people of Israel Move, so does the Ark of the Covenant, a temporary house. Can you imagine dwelling in a tent, a temporary house, for this long of a period of time in order to live with those that you love? God lives with Israel and is, and is not tired or weary of the living conditions. Jesus came down through 42 generations, and he's born in a manger inside of a bond. No house, only a stable where the animals live. Because there's no room for him in the end. Born to be with those he would love. Luke 9 and 58 says, foxes have holes. And birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Church today, homelessness is not new. According to statistics as of 2019, there are over 567,000 homeless people in the U.S. on any given night. Still remains that there is still no room in the end. That's about 17 out of every 10,000 people. Drive down Lower Wacker Drive. See,
See, COVID-19 don't mean nothing when you got to live outside. Go down Lower Riker Drive in Chicago. You'll find many of our brothers and sisters sleeping outside, and then some are in shelters. God is no stranger to homelessness. Jesus is no stranger to homelessness. But there is something about homelessness that is endearing to God. Because God has been there. You know, no house for God. No house for the Son of God. For our Redeemer, for our Savior, for our Messiah. Yet God lived over 400 years with Israel in a tent. David wants to build God a house. But the text shows that God wants to do something different. But instead, God desires to show his love. There's something about love that shows up in a house. I don't know how to explain it, but, but, but when God is without, even when David has a cedar house, God refuses to offer. David is resting. Give me an idea of what's going on in this text. David is resting in his house. He, he's been given rest from his enemies on every side and, and begins to think about the Ark of the Covenant, where the presence of God is. Is resting in a tent inside of a tabernacle that, God, that David had constructed in chapter 6, verse 17 of 2 Samuel. After he had come down from the house of Obed-Edom. David's love for God desires a house for God. I'm going somewhere. Loving God means you want to do something for him. But here's what God says in response to David. It says here, but it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day, but have moved about in a, in a tent and in a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, even them saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Even though David's desire to build a house for God was real and was from his heart, God's plan is bigger than David's. It was a plan that shows God's love is beyond comprehension. Verse 7, I'm sorry, verse 11 says this. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will build thee a house. Yeah. It, it, it's not that no one has the experience to build a house, not just a house for God. See, in those days, the priesthood was corrupt. Idolatry was practiced. The judges were dishonest. So if anyone could build a house, it seems like David would have been in the running. But David was a man after God's own heart. We know that. But David had other battles and fights and wars to fight. So who can build God a house? Solomon did a wonderful job, but it didn't last. There were, in fact, three tabernacles, three temples throughout Jewish history that were built, but each one of them was destroyed. The last temple was destroyed by Rome in about 70 AD. Who can build God a house? So God answers the question. He says, when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. God chose Jesus, the seed, 
to build a house for his glory where we could live together with him eternally in heavenly places. Ephesians 2, 5 through 7 says this. It says, even when you were dead in sins, God has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. That's love. Even when we're dead in sins, God made us alive together through Christ Jesus. In other words, when Jesus died and rose again, we got up with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's love. See, see, you don't live with someone for over 400 years in a tent, and you're not really in love with them. So my first and only and last teaching point is this. You are loved. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Church today, Jesus is the one who was well able to build a house for God and for us that we should not perish but have everlasting life because God loves us. See, that's shouting material. See, we, we can go to sleep tonight with, with the full assurance that our living arrangements are already taken care of. We don't have to live in places where there is no room. See, you don't have to worry about the rent being due because it's rent free. You don't have to turn up the heat because the heat comes from the sun of God. See, you, you don't need electricity in this house because heaven operates by the power of God. See, the house that God built was built for the homeless. The house that God built was built for victims of violence, the lonely lives of those lost unjustly from COVID-19. Our brothers and sisters taken and lives taken unlawfully at the hand of those that should protect us from lawlessness. The sick, the house of God is for the bereaved. The, God, the house of God is for whatever situations and conditions we face. All of us have a place in the house that God built. That's why you're loved because we are part of the house of God. Yes. But can, can I ask you a question? I'm almost done. Can I ask you a question? Where are you living? Do you need joy? Try living in the house that God built. Do you need peace? It's in the house that God built. Do you need a healing? It's in the house that God built. Do you need a way through? It's in the house that God built. You see, it's in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Albertina Walker sings, Lord, keep me day by day in a pure and perfect way. I want to live. I want to live on God in a building not made by hand. Second verse says, I'm just a stranger here, traveling through this barren land. Lord, I know there's a building somewhere, a building not made by hands. And then, Lord, keep my body strong. You know, you got to be kept in this world so that I can do no wrong. Lord, give me grace to run this Christian race to a building not made by hand. We have a house that God built. I, I don't know if you have found any house that can pass to God in this world. But I, I came to tell you that I haven't found one yet. I, I've lived in a number of houses. And guess what? I didn't move from them all. 
I used to live on the west side of Chicago on 16th and St. Louis. And I drove by there about, uh, about 12, 13 years ago. And I drove down the street. And, and I passed where I thought the house was, so I came all the way back around. And I stopped where I knew that house was. And, and do you know what? It wasn't nothing but flat land. The house was gone. So I came here to tell us that, 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 that God's house is everlasting. God's love is eternal. See, God's house will take you and house you when nobody else don't want to be bothered with you. See, we're living in these houses nowadays. We can't go nowhere. But I dare you to switch from where you are right now in your spirit and live in the house that God has prepared for us. See, it's through his Holy Spirit. So we're going to have to shift a little bit. We're going to have to take what we normally do and go into the house of the Lord, the word of God for the people of God. God bless you. Amen. Come on, just tell God today, I thank you for your house. Uh huh. Y'all didn't say that with me. I say, tell God today, I thank you, Lord, for your house. I thank you for keeping me every day in a pure and perfect way. I want to live. I want to live God. I want to live Lord in a building not made by hand. Guess what these bodies going to wear out? Your house and your tabernacle is going to wear out. And the greatest joy we have, the greatest expectation that we have, is to be able to look forward to a house that God has built. There may be someone in our listening audience today that, that is, is out of the ark of safety. Somebody needs a house to live in. See, we're in a house right now. You got a house to live. I got a house to live in. And we got a spiritual house, but everybody does not have one. So this message is for you. This message is for, for, for coming to the one that will give you what you need and will never shut the doors on you. See, the doors of the church in God are always open. You don't have to worry about a place to come in God because the, the, the doors are always open. So if you need a savior, if you need someone that can just take you in, he won't let you go. Try Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. At the close of every service at Beth Eden Baptist Church, we have a benediction that we share, and I ask that you share in this benediction by repeating these words after me. May God be within us to refresh us, around us, to protect us, before us, to guide us, above us, to bless us, and beneath us, to hold us up. I just point to somebody in your household and say, I love you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. And most of all, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the Lord wants you to be saved. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes, it is. You know, it's been six months. It's good to be here. Just to hear the songs of Zion. Just to see one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. But while praying on my knees, I heard the small voice speak to me. Stand still, my child, and concentrate on me, for it's already done, hallelujah, it's already done, thank you, Jesus, 
Just stretch out on your faith Knowing I will make the way Receive your healing Receive your miracle today If you only believe It's already done up doors no man can close you gotta keep the faith never give up he's worth it out for you for you oh it's already done hallelujah it's already done thank you jesus just stretch out It's already done.